before we continue with the Sega Saturn version, I feel it's time to crack open an old friend. Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Magic Knight Ray Earth for the Super Nintendo! Originally, my plan with this LP was actually to do this game on its own, but I realized that this game is rather minimalistic in its JRPG styles, and very simplistic, and there's not a lot, of, but a lot of content, so that's why it's been put to the side in terms of compare, comparing it with the Sega Saturn version, and I plan to do this in two ways. One, if it allows, I'll be trying to put uh, shots of the Super Nintendo over top the Sega Saturn footage, just to show different comparison pieces between scenes. If I'm not able to do that, then I'll be tackling the Super Nintendo version on its own in specific segments. So with that, let's get started with the first big difference between the Sega Saturn and Super Nintendo versions, and that is that there is no Tokyo Tower scene at the beginning of the Super Nintendo version. It just starts out in our strange new world. So let's get back to the Sega Saturn version and continue on there. Nightmare is this? That hurt. Since we're all conscious of what's happening, I think we can rule out dreaming. It was a figure of speech. But whatever. We have to find out what happened. What is this strange place? It appears we've been blown out of our world and into another. One thing's for certain. This isn't Tokyo. As we were falling, I saw a floating mountain and a volcano in the distance. I noticed that too, though I decided I might be hallucinating. Look, I'm not in the mood to compare trips. We've got to find a way out of here. Well, why don't we introduce ourselves first? What? Admittedly, this is a trying circumstance, but we can at least stay civil. Introductions seem like a natural starting point. Then we can put our heads together and get out of here. Count me in. <sighs> then I guess I have no choice. Count me in too. My mother said I blew in on a breeze, so I became known as Fu, which means wind. My friends call me Yumi. I'm 14 in the 8th grade. What a coincidence! I'm 14 too! My name's Sakaru. What? You're the same age as me? <laughs> you look like you're still in elementary school. I must confess that I have the very same impression of you. <sighs> oh, honestly. I quite obviously am substantially more mature than you, foo. Are you going to bicker all day? Enough! Emerald must have made some mistake. You can't be the legendary Magic Knights. You're just bumbling children. Rude. What do you mean, children? You're more of a child than I am, buddy. I have lived on this world for 745 years. What? But who are you? My name is Clef. I am the High Priest of Sephiro, and your guide in this realm. Until you reach the end of your journey together, you cannot return home. Master, the legendary magic knights have successfully landed. 
It seems that our precious emerald is not bound as tightly as we'd thought. Her intent must be to revive the ancient machines. We must have a plan to counter Emerald's activities, Zaygat. Your impudence reveals your age. Master Zaygat knows all. The ones Emerald has summoned from beyond the barrier are merely children. But now that Clef is guiding them, there may be more cause for concern. That meddlesome priest is the fly in our ointment. The question is, how do we remove him? Alcyon. Yes, Master Zagat. The time has come for a little child abuse. Mm. My pleasure, Zagat. Just gotta say there with that one piece of dialogue that Zagat Zagat just said. Uh, child abuse is not really what I really want to see, ever, from a villain. But now we're back in the Super Nintendo version, because this is our first split between the two versions. Sega Saturn will go on just to be more cutscene, but here, in the Super Nintendo version, we get our first instance of control by kind of stretching out this area of plot. You see, Clef wants us to do a little errand for him, and if we bring it, and we, we bring the treasure box back from the LL Woods, he'll t tell us how to safely return home. It's a little bit around a way of saying things, but it's all for the sake of the game. Negatively speaking, it's pretty much padding. Also, there's some slight variances in the dialogue, because Fu, um, will say some things that are a bit fourth wall breaking, pretty much just making sure that this is a game. We also receive our first items. Recovery items, but items all the same. If you ever get into trouble at this point in the game, you can always come back to Clef in this area, and you can heal up absolutely for free. So if you are ever in the need of actually healing, um, don't be hasty on using your life cubes. So welcome to the world. The world known as Sephiro, actually. We have yet to hear it in the second Saturn version, but this is where we are. And here is just a look at our three wonderful ladies here, Karumi and Fu. Based on their stats, you can tell that Hikaru is more attack-focused, Umi is more balanced, and Fu is more magic-heavy. In our items, we also have a special item, candy. In terms of the anime, this is actually uh, connected, because in the anime, Hikaru had two pieces of candy that she brought along with her. Now, because Fu is not great in the physical defense department, I'm going to put her in the back, just so she takes less damage when we ever we get into fights. Otherwise, we should be relatively ready to go. So where is this L.L. Woods? Well, it's actually all the way down here. And now we get to see our own little piece here that we saw very similar to the Sega Saturn version. I will say now that between two ver both versions, there are some spelling and pronunciation differences. For instance, our big bad guy here is Zagato, or Zagat as he is in the Sega Saturn version. Also the Majin versus the Machines, and we also get to see his name too, Innova. Otherwise it pretty much plays out as normal. Except he doesn't mention child abuse, so we're in the clear here. If I was doing a point system, this game would already get a point in my favor. But welcome to the LL Woods. And our first battle. So, this is a traditional JRPG fight. What we have is pretty much simple. You're able to attack, defend, use items, and also able to change your formation whenever you wish with the move command. Otherwise, we're punching frogs. Simple as that. It's 
kind of odd because, well, you wouldn't think that three 14-year-old girls would really be able to handle themselves in a fight, at least with enemies in any case. But, you know, what can you do? It's a JRPG. Clef did mention there are fairies in this wood. And, for instance, there's this one here. Particularly named LL, I guess? If you're not a monster, then what are you? I'm Hikaru. <laughs> um, no, you're human, actually. <laughs> not. It would have been better if it's like, well, if you're all Hikaru, in terms of a species, that would be a better way of saying it, but. Well, the dialogue is very simple in the Super Nintendo version, so they're not going to go out of their way in order to be cheeky. So we, thanks to the fairy, we have our next destination in terms of the woods and finding the treasure box. But first... It's time to fight some bees! I love, I just love the concept right here of being able to punch bees. It's pretty fantastic. Just punch that bee. <laughs> also, Karo makes a weird noise whenever she fights. But between the pink and orange flowers, it's kind of hard to tell when you're not paying attention, but yeah, pink and orange. It doesn't look like that color, though. In terms of examining things, either you're going to be pressing one of the buttons on the controller, or you're going to be, well, mashing into things. Thanks, Umi, for explaining that with your hard head. This screen is unfortunately a bit of a pain, though, because um, there's these little paths off to the left and right, and Instinctively, you would think that there's something off onto one of those paths. There isn't. It's just a waste of time. Unless you're planning on leveling up a little bit in terms of just getting a little bit stronger, then yeah, you can do that. But I kind of want to do that as little as possible and just kind of get out of this wood. Because up here is our treasure box. We did it! Now we have the treasure box, and we can head back to Clef. And from here, the Super Nintendo and Sega Saturn versions merge once again once we return to Clef. So with that, I'll see you back with the Sega Saturn. This world is known as Sephiro. You have been summoned by Princess Emerald to fulfill your destiny and save us. Summon Ray Blast! We'll say that this monster is pretty cool. Holy smoke! When Emerald was free, this land knew nothing of danger and suffering. All beings of Sephiro lived together in peace and harmony, fearing nothing. But now, this world reels as a dark chaos seeks to engulf our very souls. Mutant beasts of unthinkable savagery have consumed our world with fear. All of this came about simply because a princess was taken from you? Yes, Emerald was the cornerstone of all Sephiro. She alone held the power to keep it in balance. You see, in our world, simple thought is the most powerful kind of magic. And in terms of that, thought is also synonymous with willpower. And a soul pure in thought can wield more power than the most insidious of evils. Princess Emerald held our world together quite literally with her prayers. But then someone stole her away? And why would anyone want to imprison her? Say God, her most trusted aid has turned this black deed. His lust for power has pushed him to bind the princess and hold her in darkness. 
It all just sounds so very barbaric. How can it be true? And besides, what relevance does this have to us? We're not of this world. Our best soldiers, knights, and magicians have tried and failed to defeat Segat. The people of Sephiro simply cannot challenge the strength of his thought successfully. That settles it. We will become these magic knights and save Emerald for you. Hey, hold on a minute. What makes you think you can speak for the rest of us, Princess? It is by Emerald's wish that you have been called to this land. Only by claiming your destiny as magic knights can her wish be fulfilled. And only when that happens will the way home reopen to you. So in a nutshell, we have no choice. To get home, we must save Sephiro. Your destiny is to become magic knights and revive the machines. Machines? Can you wield magic? Well, sure we can. Absolutely. Then show me your skill right now. Yeah, definitely not. You must have known that, Clef. There's no way we can wield magic. I had hoped that you would have at least some magic ability, but no matter. Magic transmission now! <laughs> I've never felt anything like that. What was it? I tried to give you some of my magic. But it seems that instead, magic has chosen you. Hikaru, close your eyes and feel the power. Can you sense it? The strength swelling within your very soul. I... can feel it. My heart seems ablaze with a sense of... purpose. That's right. You experience the wellspring of your magic. <gasps> What's that? It appears that Zagot's forces have caught up with us. What? Summon Griffin. Get on, quickly. But what are you going to do? I shall stop them from following you. Now go. That's insane! There is no time to argue. Go! Look for the machines. Volcano, sea, and sky. The machines are there. Class, don't be a fool! Go east. Precia is there, within the Forest of Silence. Obtain weapons from her and join Mokona. Too long, Clef. You always were a weak-minded follower, Alcio. Your alignment with evil disappoints, but does not surprise me. And yet I remain grateful to you, dear Clef. With the magic you taught me to master, I can now do things like this! <laughs> I would expect no less a fight from the best magician in Sephiro. I taught you the secrets of my magic to protect Emerald. Now you spit in my face by turning the knowledge I gave you to the service of evil. Ah, yes. The clef I still remember vividly. Pure to the last. But how will she defeat me if I taught her? You ask. Simple. I just call on Zagat. Zagat! As you wish, Alcyone. No! Ha! Those sniveling magic knight wannabes are as good as mine now! If Alcyone destroys the three emeralds summoned, there can be no magic knights, and the machines will remain sealed forever. I pray they are strong enough, for soon this stone will overtake me. And the real enemy is much stronger than Alcyone. Oh, I'm so worried. I 
wonder if Clef is all right. Come on, Fu. Didn't you see the power he had? Of course he's all right. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he's already ahead of us at the Forest of Silence. What have we here? Oh my, it's a gang of optimists. How positively saccharine. <clears throat> is the most adorable show of courage I've yet witnessed. I, dear child, am Alcio. You! What have you done with Clef? I hope he's all right. Clef is fine. He's far too stubborn to fall to someone as lame as this. Ah, such brave words in the face of impending doom. Don't delude yourself. Your little guardian is solid stone by now, kitties. Liar! I won't believe it! No way! How can that be possible? Don't worry your pretty little airfield heads. His time had come, and so has yours. Ta-ta, little ones. With you dies the legend of the Magic Knights. Be careful, little one. You wouldn't want to fall off the griffin before I killed you. solve our problem. Hikaru, if we go back and find he is stone, we don't have the means to reverse the spell. Besides, don't you remember that Clef told us to save Sephiro at all costs? That's right! Going back now would play right into the hands of those wishing to stop us. To save Sephiro, we must follow Clef's instructions and move forward at any cost. <sighs> I know. You're right. We have to press on. If I remember right, Clef's instructions were that we should head east. Yes, I'm sure of it now. He said to head east in the Forest of Silence to meet Precia. Wait a minute. I wonder if this could be the Forest of Silence. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's get moving. At this point, let's take a break from the Sega Saturn version for now, and return to the Super Nintendo, just to go over some... slight differences. For instance, what was actually in the treasure box? Well, Clef also does give the equipment, like he does with the Sega Saturn version, who makes also another game reference. But in the treasure box... is magic. And this is where those magic portraits came up that I showed off in the picture-in-picture. Picture. And Fu probably makes a really dumb remark right there. 
But beyond that, I'm just gonna say that Elcyon is riding a Rabidash, and that's pretty awesome. But one big difference here. The monster difference, and also the fact that Elcyon leaves Clef without petrifying him. So not only is there the standoff between the two-headed wolf beast and Clef, which is pretty cool, just shuffle shimmy, but the fact that Clef is now able to go after the Hikaru Umi and Fu. It's a little bit different, because in the actual show, he was petrified. He still is offered as a guide, but he's not able to actually go after them for a little bit. The soliloquy music, though, at this point is kind of nice. And another big thing, of course, is that we actually get to fight Alcyone. Our first boss fight. The griffin's head is huge. I'm just gonna point that out, like, holy, holy balls. The other interesting thing about this is that you can see that each of our three characters here have slightly different sprites. The other big thing is that we're not able to fight Alcyon at all in this fight. Seeing as we can't punch a her because she is kind of flying at this point, also she does incredible damage. So how do we go about actually defeating her? Well, you kind of remember that Clef did give Hikaru magic. Fire shot. She's the only one with magic right now, so let's give it a shot. And there you have it. I didn't point out before also that the victory music for when you win a fight is kind of chaotic and a mess. In a good way, though. Bye. I think we just killed a Rabidash. I'm just... I'm, I'm very sad now. This Rabidash is awesome. But yeah, another slight difference here is that, well, the Griffin goes away in a different way here. It's not blasted away like it was in Sega Saturn. Instead, it lets them off safely so they're not crashing to the ground again for the second time. Although I will say that three girls are very resilient for falling from great heights. Roar. Instead, it just gently disappears, and we're left on a different part of the map entirely. And so it is at this point that both games split paths again. And that's where we're going to be going for next time, because next time we're going to be continuing on with the Super Nintendo version and going into the little village nearby to get some answers on where Precia's house is. See you next time, everyone!